Hey there, how are you doing? Some of you asked to have a slower video about setting up this bold new open source on a Windows machine. We will do this in the second part of the video. In the first part of the video, we will speak a little bit about updates. So let's focus on that first. So since the last video that I did on open source bold update, it became relatively clear that another YouTuber called Medin uh, Fork is the one where the most attention is. It by now has, uh, I will link to the video, he made, he had made a video about this, and that he is focusing now on his open source bolt fork, on accepting pull requests, on adding moderators, on asking for contributors, and so on and so on. And there are by now something like 22 open pull requests and 39 pull requests closed. There are features like all kinds of providers, uh, GitHub push, and other interesting features, some of which I also want to do. But it's just better just to replace on top of him. Now, his version doesn't work in the same way for self-hosted as mine does. So I want to rebase and add missing features. And then I will, again, host that version. And we'll try to continue to work on top and provide pull requests and contributions there. I also applied to be a moderator. We will see how that goes. So that's where currently the open source bolt is. We are focusing on this fork. Many people are doing many cool things there. That's the first part of the video. Now let's go to the second part. So I already tried to do the video a couple of days ago on my old Windows machine, laptop, but it failed. Uh, I actually lost the recording, so I needed to do it today again. Uh, it will look a little bit different. It will sound a little bit different. It's old machine. I had trouble to record, but it still will be useful, slower, going through how to set it up and run on Windows. Let's jump there. Oh, wait, forgot one thing. Uh, for now, what I will show, I will show it on top of my old fork. Why? Because there I support easier way to start uh, running it on Windows with less steps. Common fork doesn't have those changes yet, but I have made a pull request. When it merged, it will be possible to do the same there. Otherwise, you will need to do a couple of additional steps. But I hope that soon it will get merged and then you will be able to run it as easily in his fork as well. And now we can go to setup guide. I'm on my old Windows machine, laptop. And here I will, as you asked, try to show you how to set up Stack Blitzball new to work on your own machine. There are a couple of forks. We will use mine because there are less steps. But I'm exploring merging with Coleman fork, the most popular one, where there are a lot of work going on. Like there are 22 pull requests at the moment. So I will be merging with this. We will be getting more features. But for now, for ease of setting up it locally and starting working with it locally, I will use example of my fork. For common fork, currently there will there are a little bit more steps to get it started because you will need to go into code to change the API key. I know there is ongoing work to allow to set API key from the UI, so you don't need to change and go into the code and change it. Okay, so there are four steps in doing this. Uh, I have showed five things, four steps. First, you will need to install node. Second, we will download the fork. Then third one is that we will run a command to install all the dependencies for the bolt new locally. And the fourth, we will start. And fifth optional step, optional one, is to provide your own key. We will see if we're going to do that. And I run out of quota for today on my free key that is already included. We will see. So let's go to the first step. So here is the URL. All the URLs, URLs will be in the description below. First thing we need to do is to download this. So we click, we download. Now, this is the second time I'm recording this video. I've tried a couple of days ago with software, and it crashed and failed with recording. So I spent half an hour doing things and lost the work. So this is my second try. This time I'm trying to record a different thing. We will see how it goes. Last time, it took something like 20 minutes, firstly, to install, like download and install node. We'll see how it goes this time. I needed to uninstall for this video again. Uh, and then the second part, which took time, was actually installing dependencies for the project. I now removed everything, so we are trying again. Here we are downloading the node, and it's not downloading fast. Okay, so we downloaded it. We are running it now, and we will be installing, accepting the license, installing, everything checked in correctly. Yeah, let's try to install two tools. And Yes, let's go. So it will be installing. 
it could be that I will walk away to make some coffee. Maybe you will need to, because as I said, at least on my old laptop, it's a bit slow. Maybe not on this step, but it will be adding additional tools like Chocolate, which will help setting up additional tools that Node.js needs. So Node.js itself done its work, but now it will be installing additional tools. It could be that it will go faster because uh, you will need to press any key, but Enter didn't work for me. It could be that it's going to go faster for me because I did went through this setup already, and maybe some dependencies still stayed even after I removed Node.js. We'll see. I think there were some additional places where I needed to press any key to continue. Oh, interesting. I maybe needed to press some kind of button. At least it was not doing anything until I pressed the button. But you can see that it's trying to install things like Visual Studio development, like things you need to be developing on Windows. And I need to press enter. I have some tea. I think it finished. Oh, there is some error. <laughs> but it should work now. Okay, next step. Let's download the wrapper. For this, we will use this button, download zip, below here. Let's try that. It's downloading. It is an archive, so we need to unpack it. This is what we're going to do. So we extract it. We need to go into the folder. And then we'll need to do what? We'll need, I think it's Control Shift. Let me see. No. I need to right click on folder. But with, hmm, it's not doing what I need. Wait, we're an extract folder. We needed to open actually the folder. Yeah, that's it is. Yeah, now we're in the folder. I was clicking in the archive window. Okay, let's try here. Yeah, so you will need to press Control Shift and right click with the mouse. Yeah, you see, when I right click, there is this. When I right do Control Shift, and right click. There is an additional option called Open PowerShell Window here. It's a terminal window where you can write commands to run. This is what we will need to do. Now we are opening the window. We will check if Node is installed and if NPM installed. NPM is Node Package Manager. Uh, it's used to install JavaScript application. Uh, it's used to install JavaScript uh, application dependencies. So let's see. Node MSV. So we have node version 22.11. Yes, that's good. Okay, now what we need to do is to do npm run, no, not run, npm install, install. Hmm. Something didn't go right. What? Okay, I'm hitting some kind of problem. Interesting. I actually didn't hit it on Monday. I will need to explore a little bit what's happening. Probably you will not see all of it. Okay, that helped. So you will need to in PowerShell to this if this happens for you. Didn't happen for me on Monday when I was trying first day a couple of days ago, but did happen now. Interesting. Not sure what this is about. Okay. Uh, let me see. Something's too off. Okay, we still need to go deeper. And now, yeah, we are still not in the right folder. 
we'll need it to actually open the folder where the package JSON is. Let's go back and see how that looks. So it's in downloads here. No, no, no. that's an archive, right? Yeah. Where is the folder? Here is the folder. We go in. And there we will see the folder even deeper. We need it to open there, yeah, here. Here we have a package JSON. This is the file that is used to list dependencies and scripts. Let's actually take a look. I did show it in one of my previous videos on Mark, but oh my god, I have a weird font. Core system. Ah. Anyways, <laughs> this is the file I showed before. It contains scripts and a list of dependencies to be installed. So they are now installing. Oh, actually, they are installing in a way where I don't see what's happening. I want to restart it. I want to do npm install, but write that it should be verbose. So we see that's what's happening. And now we see that what's happening. So it's downloading stuff. Code mirror, React, all kinds of libraries that are used by all kinds of libraries that are used by uh, Bolt new. So it will need to download and install them. Last time it also took something like 10 minutes. Obviously, I will speed this up for the video. And it's finished. So now when it's installed all the packages, we should be able to run it. Let's give it a try. For this, we will need to write the command. And again, I will share all the commands in the description and also in pinned comment for you to use as a steps. So come on, you will need to do npm run preview. On this version, it should work on Windows. In Coleman version, for now it doesn't. I made a pull request to try to fix that. Let's give it a try. So you can see that it starts to run and build the project. So it's build preview, remix wide build preview, working. Maybe I needed to ask for repose again, because we don't see what's happening. Should be faster than installation, though. OK, building files. There are some warnings. After it builds, this command should also immediately run the build project and allow you with one button to start to open it in the browser. OK, generating files. It took one minute to build on this old machine. OK, and now it's built and starting with a command that does work on Windows. So would I like to have improved browsers? No. And now it shows this kind of bar below. It says B for open browser, D for open dev tools, C for clear console, and X, X for exit. While this thing runs, you can click B. Actually, yeah. And it will open for you in the browser the bolt. It's not exactly open. Let's again in Chrome. Use that just default on this machine. OK, so for whatever the reason, it took a little bit of time to start running. So here it is. It's running locally. It's fetched the model. We can ask it, uh, build animated CSS a local page. And I run out of tokens. I will need to get other key. Let's go to open up. I will need to log in. 
with my Google account. I will need to go to my account. I will need to ask for a new key. Test Windows. Create a key. Here is the key. I will delete it later. Let's add the key. And let's try again. Hello world is as animated on page. So the reason it didn't work out of the gate, it can sometimes, but uh, on my free key, I run out of quota. That means for now it doesn't work. It may for you, but you can get the key the way I showed on open router, just register account, create a key, and it should work with free models like Gemini Flash, which you can see in and out is zero dollars. It's free at the moment. What we see here is that it created the files and it run command. I have a feeling that it may not have worked. Let's toggle the terminal. Is preview working? So yeah, sometimes with this version, you may not have preview working. The reason is this command failed. In open source version, you will need to copy and paste the command here. Whatever reason doesn't work for me. Let's try again. Go control C, control V. What the hell? Let's try with mouse. It is not working. Yeah, okay. Let's try to run here. There's probably going to be some kind of error. No, no error. So for whatever the reason terminal command failed, this is a bug to be fixed. It's not yet fixed in any version, but this is something I want to take a look when other things are taken care of. I think this should be fixed. This is not good for new beginners. So what it's doing now, it's installing dependencies for the application inside of this container and then runs the preview. Not yet, but it's there, it's building. You can like, let's see. Okay, now it's running, I think. Yes, and here we have an animated Hello World app working. Sometimes for now, in open source version, you will need to do this. This is a bug to fix. I think we'll get to fixing it soon. This is it. This is how you do it on Windows. A little bit hard for now. I would use the hosted version I actually host. Uh, I think it's easier for beginners just to use it. We'll see. Let's go to the next section of the video. So that's it. I will leave all the instructions in pinned comment and description below. Uh, before we finish, one more thing I wanted to show you quickly, and uh, maybe later I will share the link, but here is something that one of my subscribers sent me. This is what he built with the free open source hosted version. Though he used his own API key, he tested different models, and he ended up using Sonnet 3.5 as the best one for what he was doing. It worked the best for him, but it is not free, so he did spend some time, uh, not some time, he spent some money building this CRM dashboard which worked for him. It's early, it's buggy, we will do better, it will cost less, but it's exciting that this is already possible. This is it. If you want to see more of this kind of content, hit subscribe, like, leave a comment, and like tell me what you else you want to see. And if I really, really help you, consider leaving a tip by using Super Thanks. Be a good guest. Leave a tip. This is it. See you next time.